Hi everyone, in this video we are going to introduce the concept of electron transfer, but more importantly, we're hopefully going to be able to start to introduce the concept of the energy related to this electron transfer. So now, a very, very simple definition. Electron transfer is when one metal gives an electron to another metal. That's a very simple definition. And what we're going to do over the next couple weeks is try to actually quantify the energy difference that happens when this transfer of an electron occurs. Okay, so we're going to try to actually quantify this energy. It's a really cool process. All right, so now in order to do this properly though, we need to have a baseline. What are we comparing this to? And we're going to compare this to conventional power plants. So now if you recall, conventional power plants use what are called combustion reactions. So let's review the combustion reaction. So you have to have a source of fuel. Now in our power plants, we use fossil fuels. So that's going to be either coal, petroleum, or natural gas. And so now we take this source of fuel and we treat it with one reagent, which would be oxygen, and then you produce two products. So you have carbon dioxide and water. Now, if this was the extent of the reaction, we would not be studying it. But we know, because we've been studying combustion reactions for a very long time now, that combustion reactions are exothermic. So that means that they are releasing energy. And it is this release of energy that why we use fossil fuels in the first place to, to, to get our, our electricity, okay? So we take the potential energy that's stored within the bonds of the fossil fuels and using a long process we convert it to kinetic energy the mechanical energy and then eventually electrical energy which goes out into our, the public okay so now we also know from previous modules that these are always releasing pollutants and I have asked you to memorize the big five so just to recall we know that that's ozone carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, and then we also have particulate matter, okay? All of this I still expect you to have right there at the front of your brain. This is your baseline. This is what we're going to compare this entire module of electron transfer to, okay? Now the big important concept here is that in order to do a combustion reaction, we needed to understand or we needed to study heat energy. And if you recall, that is represented by a little q. Now heat energy is what we consider to be unorganized molecular motion. So when I think about heat energy or an analogy for heat energy, I'm always thinking about those little crazy preschoolers or kindergartners that burst out of the school and they go absolutely crazy at recess. They're just running everywhere. Nobody's in control and it's absolute chaos. It's unorganized molecular motion. Heat is the exact same thing. Think about a fire, right? It's not controlled. It goes everywhere possible that it could possibly go. Now we're going to compare this, compare combustion reactions to the concept of electron transfer. So now electron transfer, just to give you an example, these are usually your batteries. And a lot of times people associate this as well, as well with home appliances, okay? And we're going to talk all about this in the future, so don't worry about this right now. But just to give you a concept of what electron transfer actually is. Now, instead of using heat energy, electron transfer uses what's called work energy. So now work energy is represented with a lowercase w, and it is not unorganized molecular motion. It is considered to be organized molecular motion. So if you recall our analogy, our example of heat, where the young kids or the preschoolers running around chaotically at recess, work energy would be if all of these little kids came together and then as a unit or as a group, they pushed over an ice cream truck or they knocked over something that had tons of cookie dough. They work together. There has to be a starting point and an end point in order for there to be work. If you don't have a distance component, so a starting and an ending component, you cannot have work done. That's very, very crucial to the uh, bare fundamental understanding of what work energy is, okay? All right, so now I'm going to leave you with one question that I don't really expect you to know the answer to yet, but just use your brain because I think you can do this. So now a common battery that we use is called a NICAD, NICAD battery, okay? So now I'm going to ask you, using your brain, what two elements do you think are used in order to create this battery right here? Go. All right, did you get an answer? Hopefully you did because I wanted this to be an easy question for you. So basically all you had to do was look at this and see, okay, Ni is definitely the symbol for nickel. And then you can see that CD is definitely the symbol for cadmium. Okay, so you just had to identify two different elements. Now, you might not know this, but we're going to explain it in the future, but cadmium is very, very toxic, and so we're kind of moving away from nickel-cadmium batteries, and so we're going to talk about all the new alternatives and everything. This is a wonderful, wonderful module, and I really like it. I hope you guys like it too. Take care of yourselves and drink water.